When freedom come, folks left home, out in the streets crying, praying, singing, shouting, yelling, and knocking down everything. We knew freedom was on us, but we didn't know what was to come with it. We thought we was going to be rich, richer than the white folks, because we were stronger. But it didn't turn out that way. We soon found out that freedom could make folks proud, but it didn't make them rich. So long as the shadow of the great house falls across you, you ain't going to feel like no free man, and you aren't going to feel like no free woman. You must all move. You must move clear away from the old places that you know. When the war was over, uh, the freedmen, the newly emancipated blacks, uh, did things you would expect them. They tried to define freedom. They tested freedom by doing things that they couldn't do as slaves. As a slave, if you wanted to move around, you had to ask the master permission, and get a written pass, and what have you could be denied, and often was. You moved around. You simply walked around to see what it was like to be free. But it wasn't aimless walking. It was walking to reunite with family members who might have been sold away during slavery time, or you'd been separated during the war because of all the upheavals with armies tramping about and invasions occurring and you fleeing bondage or some other member of your family fleeing bondage, so you tried to reunite your families. You would go off and try to establish your own churches. One of the first things that blacks did, this is extremely important, is they self-separated from white churches. They weren't driven out. They understood that religion was important and they wanted to define it in their own terms. So many people on the move created problems, especially when they started off with nothing but the clothes on their backs, and when hunger and want was everywhere. What should be done to help them? How much independence should they be permitted? How many of the rights of citizenship should they be granted? The old rules of slavery didn't apply anymore, but the new rules of freedom were not clear either. The South's desire to reimpose slavery in all but name had convinced Congress to help the freedmen. During Reconstruction, the federal government would try what no other former slaveholding nation has ever tried, to protect and assist a people that had for centuries been held in bondage. To establish some order among the hundreds of private relief organizations already providing relief, Congress in 1865 set up the Bureau of Refugees, Freedmen, and Abandoned Lands. During the years it operated, the Freedmen's Bureau, as it was known, became a government unto itself, providing emergency food and medical services to refugees of both races, managing confiscated and abandoned lands, negotiating contracts between black workers and white landowners, and running its own courts. The vast majority of African Americans in the South, nine out of 10 people, had been enslaved, which meant that they owned nothing, and they had earned nothing for their work. They had made no wages for all the work they had done. And the second thing was that in most Southern states, it had been illegal to teach slaves or black people to read and write. So they did also did not have the means uh, to make themselves into what we think of as middle class people because they had no education. They also had no land. So one fundamental issue facing the nation that the Freedmen's Bureau tried to adjust uh, with only partial success was the economic transfer formation of people with nothing. The Bureau's greatest success came in the area of education. The freedmen realized that education was the road to independence and progress. Spurred by articles written by wartime volunteers, thousands of teachers, both black and white, poured into the South. They taught everywhere, in barns, one-room shacks, open fields. By 1869, more than 9,000 teachers working for the Freedmen's Bureau were teaching close to 300,000 students and running more than 4,000 schools. Black churches joined the Bureau in organizing black high schools and colleges that would train the coming generations of black educators, political leaders, and professionals. <laughs> 